you know, it's not an intellectual process to realize God, but he can reveal himself to you even if you're finite and he's still infinite through his mercy. And in this case, many religions explaining this to people. But what we believe in a yogic path, spiritual bhakti yoga path, you have to have your practicing life. Let's say you want to go Olympics. You have to practice as Olympic champion. You can't just be an ordinary person who practices sports for fun or for well-being. As you going towards professional sports, you understand maybe a certain time, a certain way you live. Maybe a certain diet you eat. Maybe you, you, know, you practice all day and night and finally you win gold for your country. So those who are seriously thinking about joining spiritual path, they're thinking about the way of life, their diet, their understanding of their external circumstance, their family life, etc. Therefore, some people become yogis or become monks or become deep practitioners, even in family life, because they just um, feel necessity of deeper transformation. And maybe their family members, they can't even share with that and understand because all people are different, not everybody the same. You can't expect that your son or your daughter will be like you. You know, maybe they will, maybe they will be better than you. Maybe they will be different than you. So everybody's different, everybody has its own path, their own karma, their own way. So the only person you can really change is change yourself can change so much others. You can inspire others, you can share with others. See, therefore, um, when I give talks to people, I normally say my talks are not the knowledge I'm giving you because the knowledge within books, and if you're a careful reader and have a good brain, you can get a lot more knowledge from the books than from my talks. My talks are faith transmission and inspiration transmission. I'm trying to make you inspired to go this way. I'm trying to go you to inspire to practice. And that's what my mission is. And then when I'm inspiring you at a certain point, I'm thinking, well, I've been trying to inspire someone else. What about myself? Maybe I also should try to practice this. So to me, teaching uh, bhakti yoga, it's not just way of livelihood. It's rather necessity for my own transformation and transformation of others. Because I want to live in a better society. I want to have better friends who are equal-minded. And I don't want to waste their time with some stupid things. And I understand my people that in my cycle, they might be artistic, creative, or even business people. So they have to work, they have to earn their living, take care of the family. But that becomes secondary when you start seriously practice your spiritual life. Your spiritual life becomes number one because your spirit soul, you're part of divine world. Now, in order to get to that evolutionary process, you might need money to buy a ticket to go to India, or you need uh, gasoline to drive to retreat, or maybe you want to make uh, your home an ashram for yourself and, you know, throw 99% of things or give them away that you don't really need. But all of it is require conscious transformation, a conscious being, and be someone with decisive power, uh, not being just driven by your own senses and emotions to have conscious decision, that's, that's the way, that's the path I'm accepting. And sometimes uh, you might have to fast or you might have to follow certain rules which help you to get your better spiritual health and physical health as well. So when you're changing your diet, when you're adopting yoga, when you are controlling your senses, controlling your food, when you're spiritually acting, then it gives you so much benefit from so many other ways that you, you weren't even expecting. Like, you become an honest person, people trust you. That's a lot in this world because people want to deal with people they can trust. So just developing so many spiritual qualities will give you so much benefit.